All right, my friendlies, we're going to finish this up strong with a picture of our own picture of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and the hormones that are involved. You now have the anatomy, but let's add in the hormones, and that will help us evaluate the physiology. Okay, so I'm going to draw in black my essential anatomy. And you are going to go, oh, sure, I know exactly what she's drawing. Because this is my hypothalamus up here. And this is my pituitary gland, but notice how I'm drawing my pituitary gland. So this is who, ant pit, and this is post pit. Let's do post pit first because uh, he's easier. Ant pit is a little more complicated. That's cool. Let's start out by reminding ourselves that the hypothalamus has neurons that literally stretch into the posterior pituitary. Done. Posterior pituitary really is nervous tissue. These neurons that start in the hypothalamus produce two hormones, and those two hormones are stored in these axon terminals of the posterior pituitary. So two hormones stored here. And they are oxytocin. That's the one that makes you happy and feel like you're willing to take care of the little parasite you just pushed out of your body. And vasopressin. This is the one that keeps you from peeing the bed at night. Two very important hormones that are in the posterior pituitary. Now look at this. How awesome is this? Hypothalamus, both of these, dude, let's make some more oxytocin so we can take care of our babies, and let's make vasopressin so we do not uh, pee the bed at night. We're going to talk about the mechanism of vasopressin when we get to the kidneys. I'm not really going to spend much time on the mechanism of oxytocin. But you can see that this, there's an anatomical connection that allows direct communication between the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Um, I have one more thing I want to draw for you because, of course, we cannot have any of this, none of this matters unless we include, dude, this is a pretty wonka blood supply, but please forgive that and know that these two hormones, if we want to release them, they're going to have to get into the bloodstream. So don't forget that part. All right. The hypothalamus also has neurons. We'll make them green this time. This time, these neurons have um, releasing hormones that they, okay, so let's just make a little RH to notice that these releasing hormones are going to be dumped into what? That portal system. Remember that thing? So this is my picture of my portal system between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary. So I just want you to remember that the re releasing hormones are going to be dumped into this portal system, and then they are going to come in and act on ant pit cells. And ant pit cells are then going to produce hormone. Once they receive the message from the hypothalamus that, dude, you got some hormones to release here, they release hormone into the main uh, circulation to go out and affect the body. I want you to list out all of them, and I'm out of room. So you have to, um, oh, goody. I'm going to go over here so that now I'm going to make a list of the releasing hormones and their hormones that are made in ant pit that are released into the bloodstream when the releasing hormones message is received. Did you understand that? All right, are you ready? Let's do this. So we have a releasing hormone. Oops, I'm going to change my color 
because I want to keep it color coded that my releasing hormones are coming from the hypothalamus. And these things, again, like they're hormones because they're getting dumped into the bloodstream, but they're produced by the hypothalamus, which is nervous tissue. One of my releasing hormones is called thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin. And thyrotropin releasing hormone is going to act on who? It's going to act on an ant pit hormone. An ant pit cell that is producing what hormone do you think? How about thyrotropin, dogs? And thyrotropin is a thyroid hormone, also known as TSH. Thyrotropin releasing hormone is also known as TRH, I believe. We're going to do an activity in lab, in the lab associated with this lecture that has to do with little dead rats. Uh, that were treated with different hormones. And you have to, based on the, um, what you see from the rats, you'll have to figure out what hormone they were treated with. And thyrotropin, so we have releasing hormones and ant pit hormones that are involved in this whole process. So you're going to have a chance to mess with these and, and do a lab activity around that. Okay, more releasing hormones. More, more. How about cortico? Corticotropin releasing hormone, which causes the release of adrenocorticotropin. Now here's the thing. This is, so I'm just going to take a little aside here. Ant pit produces these guys. But thyrotropin, or thyroid stimulating hormone, goes out and stimulates the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. What? Seriously? The message has to come from the releasing hormone, and then you get the stimulating hormone, and only then do you get the actual hormone from the endocrine gland. Same thing here. Corticotropin releasing hormone produces adrenocorticotropin, which acts on the, um, adrenal glands to produce cortisol. Wow, that's crazy talk. Like I said, we're actually going to play with this stuff in lab. We also have growth hormone, hormone, releasing hormone, which produces, what do you suppose? Growth hormone. That's pretty straightforward. And then we have gonadotropin, yeah, really. Gonado, gonadotropin, releasing hormone. Faux show, doggies. And this, that guy's involved in the menstrual cycle, <clears throat> produces luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. True story. We got to get some follicles produced if you're going to have a menstrual cycle. I have one more that we have one called somatostatin. And I'm writing this down so you can see that some of these, like somatostatin, actually inhibits the production of ant pit hormones. So somatostatin actually inhibits growth hormone and thyroid stimulating hormone. So those actually act as, it's a, it's a negative message. Don't produce these things. All right, how do you feel? Fantastic. That's a lot of stuff to have. You're going to want to make sure you have it well documented in your external brain. We will play with it in lab, and so that's really handy as well. And um, that's it. Endocrine system. Cha-ching. I talk to you all later. Bye-bye.